Hey everyone, welcome to this session on daily news analysis. Today is January 12th and let's look at the important news of the day. The first news, Vice President is saying that Supreme Court cannot dilute Parliament's sovereignty. As you know that under Article 12 of the Constitution of India, if legislature makes a law that is against the fundamental structure of the Constitution, the judiciary has the power to strike off that law. However, the Vice President does not agree with this. The Vice President says that sovereignty should be with the legislature and there is a separation of power between judiciary, executive, legislature and it should be maintained that way. So, amid a debate on the process of appointment of judges, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, first of all remember who is the Vice President? Jagdeep Dhankar, he said, uh, he made strong comments on public posturing or one upmanship by the judiciary. So, he was not in favor of judiciary stepping into legislature role every time, be it NJAC, be it any uh, piece of legislation that legislature brings out, judiciary strikes it down, citing that it is against the constitution, striking that, uh, saying it is uh, against the basic structure of the constitution. So, Jagdish Dankar is not in favor of that. He does not subscribe to that. So, he was inaugurating the 83rd All India Presiding Officers Conference uh, and of course he is the chairman of the Rajya Sabha because the vice president is the ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. He said that as presiding officers of legislatures, we cannot have an ostrich like instance on judiciary legislature relations. Parliamentary sovereignty cannot be permitted to be diluted or compromised by the executive or the judiciary and public posturing or one upmanship that is being frequently witnessed in this matter is not wholesome. He talked about NJC Act and he brought up the striking down of the NJC National Judicial Appointment Commission Act as a case of judicial overreach. He noted that it was in 1973 in the Keshav Nand Bharti case that the Supreme Court evolved for the first time the right of the courts to strike down constitutional amendments that violated what is called the basic structure or the fundamental architecture of the constitution. So, Dhankar says that I do not subscribe to this with due respect to the judiciary. So, uh, uh, similarly he also quotes uh, B.R. Ambedkar. He said that it must be remembered that the constitution never envisaged a third and superior chamber for parliament to grant approval to the legislation passed by the two houses. Supreme Court will hear Google's challenge to Competition Commission of India's Android order. So now Supreme Court will hear this case. So agreed, the Supreme Court agreed to hear Google's plea challenging a 1337 crore rupees penalty imposition by the Competition Commission of India for alleged anti-competitive practices in relation to Android devices. So Chief Justice D. Y. Chandrachur he has said that the case would be listed in January 16 after senior advocate A.M. Singhvi for Google sought an early hearing during oral mentioning. Uh, you must have come across this case regarding the Bhopal gas tragedy that the center is seeking for more compensation and the case is uh, now in the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court says that it will not try curative plea in Bhopal gas leak as a original suit. So, it will not treat it like an original suit. So, a constitution bench of the Supreme Court has made it clear to the government that it will not try the curative petition of the centre like a suit by reopening a 470 million compensation settlement that was finalised with the Union Carbide Corporation over 30 years ago in the Bhopal gas leak tragedy case. The court cannot act like a sh uh, knight in shining armour granting panacea to all. We are bound by the constraints of law, of course, we have some leeway, but government cannot say we should try your curative petition like an original suit. And moreover, here this curative petitions, it's a very rare remedy. The curative jurisdiction is a rare remedy, which is evolved by the constitution bench of the Supreme Court in 2002 in Ashok Hurra versus Rupa Hurra case. A party can take only two limited grounds in a curative petition. One, 
that he or she has not given an opportunity to be heard and two the judges were biased a curative petition which follows the dismissal of the review petition is the last legal avenue open in the supreme court ministers in delhi government possess power over their departments center has told the supreme court as you know that there is some tussle going on between the center and the delhi government regarding the control of the bureaucracy who controls the bureaucracy so the ministers in delhi government possess power over their departments this is reported by the center to the supreme court so the center submitted to the supreme court that the arvind kejriwal led delhi government is trying to create a perception that the lieutenant governor has hogged all power and the bureaucrats owe allegiance to the center and not the elected aam aadmi party regime in the national capital a constitution bench headed by chief justice of india dy chandrachur is hearing a dispute between the center and the delhi government for control over bureaucrats we have also discussed this in previous news so where what was the stance of the delhi government and now you see the stance of the center government bombay high court allows production and sale of johnson and johnson baby powder so that's a big relief to johnson and johnson the bombay high court has on uh, quashed and set aside the order by the maharashtra food and drug administration that restrained the company from producing and selling its baby powder there were altogether 11 12 results of these two are non compliant so all others are within range so it is not reasonable or proportionate on such a result that the product should be shut down in perpetuity and manufacturer of all other batches also would we uh, want reasonableness uh, or uh, proportionality to take such action that permits on conforming batches so of course if out of 11 and 12 only two results are not within the range others are within the range then of course it does not it is not reasonable it is not proportionate to order ordering the shutdown of the production that is not uh, reasonable that is not proportionate so the court said that the particular action is uh, uh, needlessly delayed by two years it's too late to fall back an example on single batch to justify ex, uh, extreme uh, action of stopping all production of all batches of johnson's baby powder so uh, now it's not banned now it's not uh, now it can continue the production women seek scrapping of section 197 of crpc and afspa in assam so a women's group has demanded that the penal of the the repeal of section 197 of the code of criminal procedure along with the draconian armed forces special powers act of 1958 so the requirement that their demand is that the requirement of sanction for prosecution under section 197 should be abolished in cases of custodial violence and other human rights violations members of the women's group said that the requirement of section for prose- prosecution under section 197 should be abolished in cases of custodial violence and other human rights violations and unjust laws must not come in the way of registration of all cases upar tragedy high court reserves order on plea against web series so on netflix there is a web series coming regarding the upar uh, fire tragedy and uh, the person uh, they they are demanding a stay on the web series because it uh, shows the person in bad light the person responsible for the fire he is an 83 year old man and he says that i have already suffered what i have to suffer and now they are calling me murderer or mass murderer so he is requesting that they, they should not allow the netflix series to uh, come in public So the Delhi High Court has reserved its order on plea by real estate tycoon Sushil Ansal. He was convicted in 1997 Upar Cinema Fire case, and he is seeking to stay the release of Trial by Fire. That is the name of the series, Trial by Fire, a Netflix series based on the tragedy that claimed 59 lives. Natu Natu has won the Golden Globe Award. so you must have come across this news it was all over social media so uh, you more important than that you should remember the uh, the music composer's name that is mm kiravani 
M. M. Kiravni. He accepted the award for the best original song, and this movie was directed by S. S. Raj Mauli. And uh, uh, there is uh, also in the Golden Globe Award, apart from R. R. R.'s uh, original song "Not to Not to," you also need to know about the other uh, uh, movies that got the award. So the best movie drama was given to Fable Mans. The Fable Mans was named the best movie drama, and uh, these uh, Banshees of Inisherin, this uh, was also uh, uh, got the award. So the Banshees of Inisherin landed the top movie award at the Golden Globes on Tuesday as Hollywood returned to a show that has been knocked off television by scandal. So there were a lot of scandals regarding Golden Globes. Uh, there were. Uh, the people were saying because the celebrities and broadcaster uh, NBC had abandoned the 2022 Golden Globes because of ethical wrongdoings of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the group that hands out the award. So there were uh, uh, allegations, there were uh, findings, there were investigations that said that they do not have any black journalist in its rank. Some members were accused of making sexist and racist remarks. And soliciting favors from the celebrities and movie studios, but that aside, the Golden Globes was uh, attended by many celebrities, so many people, and uh, RRR's "Not Too Not Too" won the best original song, and we also have the Fable Mans. And the Fable Mans is based on the Steven Spiel Spielberg's uh, own life in his uh, teenage years regarding uh, the trouble in, in his uh, parents' uh, marriage. And also anti-Semitism, so that is what he has shown in the movie that has won the award. Two thousand six hundred crore rupees incentive to boost digital payments. So in financial year, of course, uh, uh, you must be aware that how much the UPI payments has increased in India, and in two thousand one, one two thousand twenty two. 2021-22, there was an increase of 23% in digital payments from the previous fiscal year. So you can see the map here that there is a chart that shows the upward slope, how much it has increased. So the Union Cabinet has approved an outlay of 2,600 crore rupees to promote payments using rupee cards and the UPI, that is Unified Payments Interface. So it is incentivizing that. So these were some important news that were relevant for January, uh, January twelfth. Let's quickly look at uh, the highlights. The Vice President of India, uh, Jagdeep Dhankar, uh, says that the court cannot dilute Parliament sovereignty. Supreme Court will hear Google's challenge to Competition Commission of India's Android order. Supreme Court says that we will not try curative plea in Bhopal gas leak case like a suit. Uh, Centre tells the Supreme Court that the ministers in Delhi government possess power over their departments. Bombay High Court allows production and sale of Johnson & Johnson baby powder. Women seek scrapping of Section 197 of the CRPC and AFSPA in Assam. Uphar uh, fire tragedy, the High Court has reserved order on plea against web series. RRR's not to win Golden uh, Golden Globe. Fableman's Banshees win top awards as Hollywood re-embraces Golden Globes. And two thousand rupees incentive for banks to promote digital payments. That's all for right now. Thank you so much. See you in the next session with more set of news. Goodbye.